Let's build a brancher for our RISC-V i32 CPU. Uh, I've got the quick reference card. It's linked in the description here. And uh, you can see here we've got some instructions for branching. Uh, branch if equals, branch if not equals, less than, and then greater than or equal to. And um, you'll also notice that there's some unsigned variants, which makes sense um, because you'll branch differently based on whether you're treating these 32-bit values as signed or unsigned. So if we think about building a brancher, um, first of all, even the thought of building a brancher, you know, we have an ALU, but we don't really have any way, the ALU doesn't have any way of doing comparisons between two numbers. So we need some kind of comparator, which I suppose in theory you could build into the ALU and then build some outputs, some additional outputs in the ALU that gives you the results of the comparisons. But I think it's cleaner to build this uh, separately, even though this will wind up being a pretty simple circuit. You know, you don't need to build operations for all of these. I mean, in theory you could, it, but it's just more control signals to have to deal with. Uh, at a minimum, you know, you need an equals and you only need one equals because there's no difference between equality between signed and unsigned numbers. And then you need to build either a greater than or a less than, and you need to build an unsigned variant of that, but you only need to build one of them because you can take the complement and basically get to all of these um, other types of operations. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's start with some inputs and outputs. And we'll call this one data A. And we'll need another one for data B. And then we need an indicator as to whether we're dealing with a signed or an unsigned comparison. So let's do that. And we'll call this BRUN, uh, for, which means branch for unsigned. And then we need some outputs. We definitely know that we need an equality output. So let's go ahead and just put that out here. And we'll just call that BREQ for, for branch if equal. And then we need a greater than, a branch if greater than, or a branch if less than. It's arbitrary, so I'm just going to pick branch less than. And then as I do, uh, let's put tunnels everywhere. Now for our circuitry, we need, um, we're gonna need two comparisons. So let me go find those comparators. Here we go. And these will need to be 32 bits. So our sign comparison, um, we'll just make this one our two's complement sign comparison here. So uh, for the input, well, we're just gonna have data A and data B. We just need to make a duplicate of this, and then this will just be unsigned. So we'll change that from two's complement to unsigned. We need an equality, so we need to route equality over here, and I just noticed I didn't name this correctly, so let me do that. So either one of these equalities will work, so I'm just gonna hook this one up. And then, since, we, since we're dealing with less than, we need the less than on both of these, but in order to select which one we want, we're gonna need a multiplexer to route this signal as the selector. So let's get a multiplexer in here. And we'll route the signed variant as selector zero and the unsigned 
as number one, and that's because it, when this uh, break unsigned is flipped, then this is going to route it to uh, this, this unsigned comparator. So we need the selector wired up. And then we need to route this this way. I could just do a wire, but that's okay. So I think really that's all there is to it. Let's test this. Uh, one and two. So is one less than two? And the answer is yes, it is. And so LT is high, which makes makes sense. Uh, is two equal to two? Yes, it is. Branch of equal is high and uh, branch less than is low. So, so far, so good. So let's try some negative numbers to see if this works. So let's put in negative one. So the two's complement value for negative one is uh, all F's. So let me just put in all F's here. So that's negative one, and this is negative one. So negative one should be equal to negative one, so branch if equal is, of course, true. That makes sense. Working in hexadecimal to get negative numbers is, is a pain, frankly, because um, you have to two's complement things, and my brain just doesn't work that fast. So let's just change the view here to sign decimal, and uh, that'll make this a whole lot easier to do. So let's just put, say, negative one in here, and negative two in here. So is negative one less than negative two? No, it's not. So less than is false and equal, of course, is false. Let's flip this around, negative two and negative one. And yes, negative two is less than negative one, so that is true as well. Now, what happens if we flip this flag with these negative numbers in here. And actually, let's flip them around. Uh, let's flip them back. So we have negative two on the top and negative one on the bottom as a two's complement number. So let's, though, flip this view around to uh, just a hex number. So if we flip this bit now to, to calculate with unsigned number, is this number less than this number? Well, yes, it is. So yes, that still works. Let's put um, let's put something more interesting in here. So what if we just put the number one here? So if we're dealing with unsigned numbers, is this number less than this number? Yes, it sure is. But if we're dealing with signed numbers, this is minus one, and this is one. So is one less than minus one? No, it's not. And so that flag is false. So it seems to me like uh, everything here is working in this circuit. Pretty simple, um, but this goes a long way to making our CPU functional. Thanks for watching.